Well, is it is it really about Ohio State? Do we know? Do, does anybody know? I don't know. I don't know what Ryan Day is talking about. It's not. It's not about Ohio State. It's not. Everything is not about Ohio State. Okay. Let, let's get that out the way right now. <laughs> let's get that out the way right now. Um, so yeah, week four, it happened. It was a pretty good week, all things considered. You know, six top twenty-five matchups plus another that was really important in the ACC, and need. And it's not all about Ohio State because neither Ohio State. Nor Notre Dame looked very good on Saturday night. Neither of those teams did. You can't convince me. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just another reoccurring narrative this year that there really isn't an elite team really this year, at least in my opinion. that That's that's what I'm starting to lean towards as we get more and more into the season. Like Everybody has their own weaknesses in some way. It's not it's not George is going to steamroll to a title. I don't I – don't, I definitely don't think that's going to happen like that. You know, I definitely think Georgia will get some stiff competition down the line. Um, but again, the Irish had to be incompetent on multiple occasions on that final drive. Those last two plays, 10 men on the field multiple times. I mean, it was rough. I mean, fourth down plays by Ryan Day were not good. A jet sweep on fourth down being the most egregious like how what how do you come up with that like at least be boring and do the run up the middle but a jet sweep where everybody knows you're coming with that come on be original and unfortunately for the old miss rebels lane kiffin decided to be incompetent again you know same old lane kiffin stuff which is don't be a good coach you know when, when when big boys you know come up and, and slap you like 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 you talk the talk, but you gotta walk the walk. And Ole Miss did not walk the walk. They really should have because again Alabama still just kind of slugged through this game, and yet Ole Miss couldn't do anything against that defense at all. Just embarrassing, embarrassing. Now we'll talk about we'll talk about. Ole Miss's opponent in a minute, but now you're you're really in a dogfight. Unfortunately, did Travis Hunter not playing matter? He was on Twitch for like most of that game, and it didn't even matter. Like the hype for Colorado right now is a little bit dead. Um, in the world, it's put to rest for this weekend. Way it'll be. It'll be back in full force on Saturday, but we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Uh, yeah, so Oregon absolutely beat the brakes off of Colorado. Bo Nix was just happy. Bucky Irving, you know, uh, I mean, I mean, them boys, Trey Franklin, them boys is cooking. They cooked. They cooked some buffalo, which is crazy. Ducks cooking buffalo. KJ Jefferson is still that guy. He is still him. But unfortunately for Arkansas, you know, they couldn't they couldn't manage their timeouts very well. They used all of them like very early in the second half. And that cost them the game against LSU. Again, KJ Jefferson was just flying all over this LSU defense, which has been at times LSU's defense has been really good, and at times LSU's defense has been really, really bad. And it's similar to how I feel about Oklahoma. Uh which I don't have that. I don't have that bullet point here. Oklahoma's offense sometimes can be really, really good, but is that is that really, really good? Does that mean anything when you have performances of twenty to six against Cincinnati? Yes, Cincinnati has a really good defense, but no offense. So of course Oklahoma's defense is going to feast, but the offense only can muster twenty points. And again, LSU survives, but they allow thirty-one points. Like something's got to give. Uh, Will Shipley, I mean, he he was just all over Florida State, but yet Davos play calling, <laughs> which is a reoccurring thing today. I don't, I don't know what I don't know what it was on Saturday with the recurring silly play calls. There was just silly silly play calls by Davos towards the end of that game, and yet Florida State survived, and now Clemson's two and two out of the playoff discussion. Thank goodness. Unfortunately for UCLA, 
unlike some of these other teams here, they just couldn't move the ball at all. It wasn't incompetence. It was Utah's defense, like we've been saying over the past four weeks now, legit, beyond legit. Like, again, this is a team with basically four stringers at this point, third and fourth string guys getting major reps at this point. Again, Utah's offense could only muster 14 points. To think that UCLA couldn't score for almost 50-something minutes, like 56, 57 minutes, they could not score. It was rough. It was real rough. Uh, the other big Pac-12 game, the third and final big Pac-12 game, was Cam Ward just lighting up that Beebs defense. Yeah, the Beebs came back, but still, Cam Ward lit them up for over, what, 400 yards? Close to that, just insane. USC's defense still kind of concerns me. You, you, you can't allow 28 points to Arizona State. I just, I just don't see. I just don't see why. How do you do that? How do you let that happen? And then the teams that impressed me this week are the Penn State Nittany Lions. Again, really good defense. Texas, really good defense. Washington. Their defense is actually emerging a little bit. That score is a little bit misleading. Again, they put in their second and third stringers, you know, like at the end of the – in between the third and the fourth quarters at some point. They were up 52-12 to 12 at, at one point. Like, don't, don't get me started on, oh, well, Washington allowed 32 points, yada, yada, yada. No, them, them third and fourth string guys are in. Come on, stop that. Stop that noise. They were up 52 to 12 with special teams play, offense, and the defense. Just, yeah, it, it, I, I get it. I get it. It's Cal. But again, Cal just beat a really good Idaho team. So, you know, it is what it is. Whatever. Whatever, y'all. Whatever. But this slate this week, it looks a little less appealing than last week in a way. Uh, big matchup Friday night on FS1. Going to be at 8 o'clock. And then Saturday, not too much to look at in that noon window. I would say stay stay on Fox for a little bit. And then switch to CES and ABC uh, for number one and number three anyway. I don't know if you want to watch Nebraska's sorry offense. Do you really want to watch this? There's really, there's really nothing I could more I could talk about Nebraska. I, don't, I just don't want to talk about it anymore. Michigan has looked kind of eh. Two, so that's a perfect trap game for Michigan. Um, ESPN finally doing away with these silly little three-hour windows for doubleheaders. After, like, this will be the last one they do, where you have a weird triple header of SEC games, where a game starts at five o'clock because of contract obligations. I don't understand why people don't understand this by now. This is all contract obligations as to why you know. How things go. Like, do y'all not have Matt Sarhats on Twitter? Do y'all not have do y'all not have his Twitter? Because uh, I'm always up to date on, on these things. I'm always reading up on this stuff as far as media rights goes. So it's fascinating to me. Um so yeah, the big primetime SEC matchup of LSU Ole Miss, which is an elimination game at this point. Very early on, yes, I know. Um, so that'll be at five, and then the Alabama Mississippi State game, which I mean, are you really gonna watch that? I mean, you can, I might, I don't know. Um, and then that big one game day coming to Durham, Notre Dame, Duke. So, my storylines that I think you know we're gonna have to talk about again. This is that that ranked matchup on Friday night, DJ Ulakale. Had less than uh, he had less than two hundred yards passing, less than two hundred yards passing. He had like one ninety eight, um, so not very good. I'll say that much. Not very good. Um, there's some unranked teams as far as ACC teams go. Jahar Jordan, or rather. I don't know how you say his name. I'm 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 gonna figure it out. I'm gonna get like a pronunciation type thing because you know I always have a difficulty saying people's names sometimes. You know, 
So Louisville, Syracuse, Garrett Schroeder and company. Syracuse is playing Clemson in that early ABC game, that 11 a.m., 12 game uh, on ABC. Uh, watch out. Again, watch out for those two ACC teams. Again, it, it's going to be for real fun to watch those two teams down the line. Um, Texas is really good defense. Jalen Daniels, Devin Neal. Um, this is going to be a fun matchup against the unbeaten Jayhawks, who – you know, didn't really lean too much on those guys in that game against BYU last week. Didn't lean too much on them, but ultimately the Jayhawks got the W and are undefeated and ranked number 24. And will the Colorado hype completely die? Again, I don't, again, this is a Colorado team that not many expected much from, and yet they persevered these first couple weeks and then they fell flat on their faces in the game against Oregon, will they fall flat on their faces again and maybe trip and fall down the hill? We'll find out because um, Caleb Williams is coming. He is coming to Boulder. So, uh, yeah, it would be best. It would be best if Colorado tries to do something because we know, we know what USC's defense is capable of, which is absolutely nothing. <laughs> Again, LSU Ole Miss early elimination game. Both teams are weak in areas that I've talked about already. Mikey Keene, Fresno State, need to watch out for those guys. They have a big game, not this week against Nevada, but in a couple weeks against Wyoming, which is the team that took Texas to the fourth quarter to put away. Um, and then, of course, Riley Leonard and the Duke Blue Devils, Mike Elko's squad, Boy, they got all that momentum on their side. And, I mean, again, this is a tough, tough Irish squad. Sam Hartman, Audrey Estime, I mean, they, they are they are hungry for a win, and they could get another big-time win against a team like Duke, which would be very good for Notre Dame. Very good for Duke. This would be astronomically big. You have, you have, a, you have a win against Clemson, which is still a good win right now. But a win against Notre Dame, a win against the Notre Dame that took Ohio State to the limit, yeah, that'd be a pretty good win. I'd say that much with Notre Dame still have the potential to stay pretty highly ranked. The same, you know, Clemson could, you know, get back into it as well at some point. But, again, this is going to be a weird year because it's the final year before things change fully. So we're already getting weird stuff. Like, again, this is some weird stuff we're talking about here, like Louisville and Syracuse being unbeaten. Like, like the Colorado hype in general. Again, we're only a quarter into the season, and things are weird. Like, y'all y'all think we playing. Y'all think we playing out here. No, we not. We not. So get yourself situated. Grab you whatever – whatever food you need on Saturday and if you need like some popcorn or something, it'll be like a movie on Friday night. Cause that right matchup is going to be very, very fun. So I'm ready for Saturday. It's going to be a weird Saturday because of the way games are, you know, as far as like times go. So not everything lines up perfectly, but I can work out with it. I can work with it. So I'll see you all next Tuesday. As far as college football goes, tomorrow we'll talk the NFL. Um, you've been seeing some community tab updates. Um, shout out to the last two new subscribers. Welcome to the family. You are a part of a big boy family. So, so hug the other 214 subscribers, you two, whoever you are, and welcome. Just Get, get a chair, kick back, engage in the comments, because I haven't really been seeing too many comments on videos lately. I don't know why. Uh, but, yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow night talking to the NFL. Yeah, have a good night.